Okay, everybody. So welcome to our podcast. Um, today we are talking to Emily. Emily, nice to have you here. Nice to um, meet you. <laughs> we are today going to be able to pick your brain on a couple of very interesting topics and I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, Emily, why don't you give us a small introduction about yourself and okay. then we'll take it from there. Okay. I'm Emily. I'm Senior Acceleration Manager at Xnode, uh, in charge of Scale-Up Acceleration Program, which is bringing overseas startups to China and help them to find the product market fit here in China. Yeah. Great. Um, so, what we'll like, what we thought about, we might talk today. Uh, talk about today is, um, I mean, basically, what you do every day is you help scale-ups, startups, um, enter China, right? Become successful in China in some way. Um, so one of your uh, program uh, workshops, because mm -hmm. you deliver many workshops to uh, lots of startups, is about China's digital landscape, right? Yeah. So um, that would be actually something really cool to talk about. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what are the cornerstones of this uh, China's Digital Landscape Workshop. Yeah, so um, basically for our program it actually consists of some workshops and some tailor-made meeting settings. So uh, the China Digital Landscape is kind of the kickoff of the program because we want the startups to know from a uh, business angle about uh, how China digitalization and how China innovation comes to today's situation and uh, how the innovation really com comes from. So, so it's kind of a trace back of all the innovations and uh, how the bigger picture of, of China um, comes to today. Mm -hmm. So it's very high, kind of high level for startups to know, but uh, for founders over from overseas, actually it's very important for them to um, have a general idea first. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you can go with either vertical area or you focus on your own industry uh, after that. Mm -hmm. So um, for this workshop, I, I, there's, a, uh, there's a page around um, how many years China actually used to evolve from uh, offline traditional media age to mm -hmm. the current we call mini program or mini system age. And okay. uh, actually from media to PC, um, it took about 15 years to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, for PC to mobile, which kind of having five years of experience in China. Mm -hmm. And after that, actually from mobile to mini system, which uh, is initiated more like from the WeChat mini program. Mm -hmm. uh, it started only in January of 2017. So it's wow. quite recent. Mm -hmm. So around two years. Huh? Yeah. That's uh, so that's exponential acceleration, right? It's yeah. getting faster and faster. Yeah. And um, so that's very interesting. What are what are some of the main differences uh, differences when we talk about the landscape in uh, China versus the landscape um, that the founders you're dealing with on a daily basis are familiar with? What are some of the differences? I. I may say, I think uh, the, the speed of adoption in China is very different from how the Western world or any place outside China mm -hmm. um, is experiencing. Mm -hmm. Because all the development, all the economic growth is happening within the 30 years of the economic development. Yeah. And the internet only existing in China for like, like around 20 years. So, so within that, that time, we have BAT, we have this mini system um, evolving all the time. And within two years, this development is uh, something you can't even find a lot of data around. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the startups uh, coming into China, uh, maybe the traditional way of the, the not traditional, the, 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 their own business in their home country may be only based on a web page version. But if you are mm -hmm. coming to China, maybe the one approach you need to really think about is bringing everything to the mobile version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this um, transition of uh, traditional media to PC, 15 years, PC to mobile, five years, and then mobile to those mobile mini system apps in two years, that is really representative of overall China and China digitization being a very, very fast, rapidly changing environment, right? Um, what are some 
What are maybe some surprises uh, founders usually have when they first arrive in China and then they, you know, try to set up their business model here and they think, oh, it's so easy, you know, mm. we're going to get to China and then we scale, then we conquer the world mm -hmm. and IPO and everything's fine. What are some of the some of the things you notice these founders are very surprised by? I think most of the founders have still have the perception like China is very big. We have the population. Everyone pay one one RMB. Maybe it's already a big income for for, for the company. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the case is um, uh, during our program, we're really trying to find uh, help the entrepreneurs to find their product market fit, which is starting with their beachhead market and also starting to focus. Um, from tiers of cities, from uh, industry uh, focus, or from targeted customers into particular niche market. So, so, so these are, are the things we need to identify. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for overseas uh, startups especially, because you can't be very, uh, your, your, your focus can't be very scattered around. Otherwise, you, you will be traveling into Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing all the time, but uh, didn't really find anything uh, useful or building the right traction. For, for your business in China. And I, I, I actually, from my perspective, it's also very interesting from, for me to know, like, um, as a newcomer to China, what do you see uh, all those mini programs and uh, how, the, uh, how, how WeChat is influencing uh, your daily life, for example? Yeah. Um, so I think, for me, as someone who hasn't lived here for long, or let's say I have lived here four or five years ago, and mm -hmm. since then it obviously changed massively it was uh, it was it was a big change to see that everything's powered by wechat um, and i certainly uh, talked to a couple of founders uh, mainly from europe that i'm in close close touch with and i hear them having mostly very wrong ideas about china you know they think that they need to have a nice looking website first. Um, they basically think in terms of European or US lean startup standards, which don't really apply to uh, this ecosystem, mm -hmm. as I have learned mm -hmm. uh, during the past couple of months, right? And um, the, it, of course, the more difficult it is when you don't speak Chinese, right? So I know just the rough basics of uh, Mandarin and it uh, dealing with all the pos like all the digital possibilities that WeChat mini programs etc offer is uh, so much harder when you can't read what the hell is going on on your smartphone screen right so um, i think especially for mini programs because it's so new and yeah. uh, although the number of mini apps uh, in mini uh, WeChat system is uh, it, i think it's 2.3 million already wow. uh, and uh, it's already exceeding the number of apps in apple store so wow. so um, but all, all of those are created in uh, most of, uh, I, th I think most of them are created in chinese mm. so 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 actually we are not really seeing when the create uh, cr the creator of those mini apps they don't really having consider the expat community in china i would say mm. um, because uh, because the population itself is already big enough for them to tackle with mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's say I'm a founder. Uh, I'm sitting in Germany right now, and mm -hmm. I uh, have these huge plans of coming to Shanghai and mm -hmm. establishing my presence here. Except for, of course, getting in touch with Xnode, which would be the best step to take. What, uh, what would be the one, two, three, four, five first steps one should take not only like ahead of coming here, mm -hmm. but also then once they say, okay, like kind of the market research was positive or whatever was positive, those first steps, they are here, what else to do and to look out for? You mean before coming to China? Yes, before coming to China and then once you're in China. Okay. 
I think before coming to China, maybe some market research on the macro from the macro policy level is something you can do. From macro the, policy meaning what the government yes, thinks. Yeah. Yes, because very in, important in, yeah. in China, uh, the government is a, it's a big government, mm. and uh, there is actually a lot a lot of policies influencing the daily life of us. So um, we have the five year plan, which is focusing on what kind of industries the the country the country is uh, having the direction to, and mm -hmm. the, the Government. Under this five-year policy, the macro policy, actually there is a, foc a lot of fo focus or, or grants or subsidies for uh, support from the government following those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, uh, the current five-year or the next five-year, there's a lot of focus on um, smart manufacturing, uh, industry 4.0 and mm -hmm. uh, um, clean tech and uh, these kind of uh, related topics. So if your business is really related to this uh, particular domains, it's actually um, sometimes uh, it's easier for you to get into connection with certain local partners who really want good technologies and uh, good partners from overseas mm -hmm. because they want to leverage a good technologies for their own development as well. And uh, also... Um, so before we continue to the next yeah. step, um, for me as a very unexperienced European founder, mm -hmm. um, would I find these kind of information uh, by Googling it or do I need to go to the Chinese government website or what, where do I get that from? That's a very good question. I think for the government macro policy, especially the five-year plan things, it's very, quite easy to find. Mm -hmm. And although the Chinese government's uh, website kind of having information scattering around, but mm -hmm. uh, they, they must have the English version for that report. Okay. And uh, that, that's kind of the thing I think it's good to start with because for other market research, actually, um, what I recommend is really, if you have Chinese friends, that's the best, They're just uh, rely on them <laughs> to search some of the local information for you. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, for example, for, for us, uh, how we do market research during our program is we are uh, leveraging on our community power. We are inviting some of the university students or the people who are interested in entrepreneurship in China uh, to the bilingual, with bilingual capability and let them to helping the entrepreneurs who don't know the language and uh, to, to do the market research together mm -hmm. and to do the industry re report. It's, it's kind of impossible for them to like hire a consultancy or very expensive service, right? right. So, so it's a kind of, a we, we bring the people who are interested in this topic and uh, helping them to do this together. So mm -hmm. that's the thing we are trying to do uh, within our program. But after that, maybe they, when, when they um, finish the program, they might find some good partners already in China and they will tell the, tell the entrepreneur more about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing to do before you come into China, mm -hmm. maybe download a WeChat to give a try <laughs> yeah. on uh, what the product really looks like. Although, yeah, definitely. Although the foreign version actually... Uh, Has limited uh, functions, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. So, so, but, but even with limited function, I think it's already a lot to explore because yeah. for WeChat itself, um, they started uh, 2012, if I'm remembering it right. Mm -hmm. um, they they have been updating their uh, their their versions. Keep, uh, they have been keep updating. So so for us for for Chinese local, it's kind of we are gradually accepting uh, accepting different functions. Mm -hmm. But for the newcomers who downloading this app for the first time, it's already like a super app, yeah. and <laughs> and every function is already embedded in, and it's kind of hidden some uh, uh, here and there. Yeah. And even for me, um, yesterday I just figured out they are starting their own e-commerce recommending system and that's something I just uh, click by random randomly and I, I figure it out and it's, sometimes it's a surprise to me as well wow mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so first step uh, look at the global like at the macro level and figure out what where's China heading mm -hmm. and does my mm -hmm. business idea fit into the mm -hmm. big picture mm -hmm. next kind of get acquainted with the Chinese social media landscape yeah. which is basically download WeChat, um, try around, yeah. uh, get your head around it. Um, yeah. and, and maybe the third step is mm -hmm. um, still related to the government, contact mm -hmm. the foreign government. Because um, okay. from Chinese perspective, the government level, there's uh, 
there's country to country cooperations around innovation recent years there's a lot mm -hmm. uh, for example we are engaged with Australian landing pad enterprise Singapore and different countries uh, initiatives all the time and these uh, they actually the, the governments uh, um, from overseas, they are very interested in engaging their start uh, home country startups to uh, to to um, go abroad mm -hmm. and to have some international relations with uh, with overseas uh, entities or expand to uh, overseas market. Yeah. So so in that sense, um, just you don't you you don't really need to um, have. Uh, like a lot of engagement, but uh, it's it's good to know like what they have and uh, to choose uh, actually uh, at least have uh, bigger choices, more more choices and uh, uh, to 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 see from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. So I think before we get to the to the end of this first episode, um, we will talk about the the steps. Um, you should take as a new founder in China itself, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something we might we can talk about now next, and then we'll get to the end of it and wrap up the episode. Okay. So what would be if now I do all of this, right? I do the macro research, I uh, get acquainted with the social media landscape, I talk to local government, find out how they can help. Um, and now let's say all of this is positive, like my idea really fits into the picture. Um, once I get here, and let's say you did the big mistake of not getting in touch with Xnot, you know, but now I'm in Shanghai, um, mm. how do I start? Do I start talking to, uh, do I start widely getting in touch with people on LinkedIn, potential suppliers, potential customers? Do I network on different events? Do I just sit in my hotel room and code, um, start building the, a first MVP that's tailored to the Chinese market? Mm -hmm. What would be your, from your perspective, the most efficient first steps for okay. new founders here? So for the precondition is uh, he or she is not joining Exynos Scale-Up program, right? Right, <laughs> big mistake, but that's that's what we assume. Okay, then I think um, maybe uh, f first of all, LinkedIn doesn't really work that well in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, not many entrepreneurs are using it really good in communication or use it at, as a professional social network. Mm -hmm. So so that's why um, maybe off some going to some offline events uh, around entrepreneurship or around this in particular industry will be a very good idea for entrepreneurs uh, from overseas to see what kind of uh, things are happening here. And yeah. even go to some pitching days and, yeah. uh, and to, to, to see what kind of innovation we have here. And there are basically events happening, like there are 10 events you can go to per day, right? It's, it's crazy. It, that was actually something I really liked Five years ago, when I was living here, it was um, the the frequency of interesting events uh -huh. happening. Um, Every day, meetups, conferences, uh, board discussions, something you can go to, attend, meet people. So it's really, really easy to attend these kind of events. Very different from some of the European cities that are obviously much smaller and. Um, you also have these events happening there, but it's more maybe you know every second week or mm -hmm. every third week you find some event that might bring some value to you. Here in Shanghai, I, I feel like I can go to ten events per day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think for um, but right now I would say the situation is kind of cooling down a bit. Okay, uh, it's, uh, not many that many events, but uh, uh, especially there's not many English themed uh, English speaking events. Mm -hmm. So. And maybe when people first arrived and starting to selecting from events, just choose those. Uh, maybe go go a lot at the first of two weeks, and then mm -hmm. to st you can tell from 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 the event organization or from the speakers or from the audience uh, networking to see what what is good and what is bad, yes. and and then kind of narrow down because um, within China the expat community is kind of still quite limited. And mm -hmm. uh, you overlapping with entrepreneur community, expat community, English speaking events. That actually the number is um, 
okay to manage, I would yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and even so, I mean, even though there are some, uh, like, there's a, quite a number of uh, expat or English meetups and events, uh, I think you have, really have to focus because maybe like 60 or 70 percent of those, I would say, um, are, you know, to say it bluntly, a waste of time. So mm -hmm. they might not add value to you personally, yeah. right? So you can basically spend all your day in Shanghai meeting, like going to events and then, yeah. but getting nothing done really at the end of the day. Or, right? or the other way is uh, really do some preparation before you come. Yeah. It's, uh, um, uh, it's part of our program schedule as well. If we have uh, uh, enough interest in one country, we, maybe we are going to that home country to deliver some of our workshop or do some sharings uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in that country. Because what we see is some of the preparations, if you do it in your home country, it's uh, kind of not a waste for the entrepreneur's time in Shanghai mm -hmm. or in China. And also it's uh, kind of well equipped uh, for the entrepreneurs to, to have better resources. For example, Chinese are everywhere globally. So <laughs> maybe you can talk to some Chinese in your home country to know that know this target uh, country better. Yeah. And or or there's uh, more and more VCs from China, and they used to only operate in RMB fund, but right now they are setting up their USD fund or uh, global fund. Then talk to the investment manager in the home country or reach out to them uh, from their from the home country, and then you come uh, you go come to China. And mm -hmm. maybe talk to some VCs at first as well. And that's why I recommend the pitch events because um, investors or investment managers, they are the best people to give you a general idea of what kind of industries or what kind, what kind of the landscape of your in specific industries have been evolving and what are the um, leading players or monopoly players in, in this particular industry. Because for even for even for BAT, they have a lot of buzzword. Uh, there's there's a lot of, a lot of news around them in English, but uh, much more things are happening here in China only in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, great. Any other steps? Mm, I think for now it's uh, kind of just the the starting point. Yeah. And uh, uh, China is too big. And the, the information yes. we need to deliver is like too much, so 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 better to keep it just short and simple. Yeah, I agree. So uh, I think that was some really amazing value that you were able to deliver here. I hope uh, lots of you enjoyed it, and we'll see each other next time. Make out to make sure to check out our scale up startup acceleration program uh, on the xnote.com and. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.